wiring your motorcycle. If you're confused or frustrated, you're not the only one. I can tell you from the comments and questions I constantly get. But in this video, I'm gonna give you some simple steps to follow so you can get your head around this whole wiring thing. Let's get into it. Oh, and I also just returned from an epic little motor camping adventure. If you wanna see a sneak peek of that, I'll leave it at the end of the video. I've done a really basic wiring diagram here just for everything that you need so you can turn the key and actually have the bike started today. And in keeping things simple, for this installation, I'm gonna be using the Motor Gadgets Mo Unit Blue. These things are incredible. If you struggle with wiring, definitely invest in getting one of these things to put in your bike. This is gonna be fairly generic for most motorcycles, especially Japanese ones, but just make sure you get your workshop manual and follow anything that you're unsure of. Let's get started. Step one. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do before you pull anything apart is put a label on it. And I like to use painter's tape and rather than trying to ride on the roll, what I find is easier is just lay a piece flat on the bench. That might seem like a pretty insignificant tip, but I can tell you my handwriting at times is hard enough to read, never alone writing on a curved surface. The first thing you're gonna be scratching your head with is where to start. And I recommend starting from the battery, the power source. Your negative terminal will just go straight to the body somewhere. Make sure it's a good connection, make sure there's no paint on it. And your positive terminal will go to one side of the solenoid. But just leave it disconnected for now because we don't want the system to be live. I'm using this fuse starter solenoid here with the four pins. It is going to be the only physical fuse in the entire system. Motor Gadget's Mo Unit has everything else covered in the way of fuses. It's all built in, which let me tell you has removed so much bulkiness out of the entire wiring harness. Running a starter solenoid like this with the fuses is fantastic, but I would also recommend probably running a fuse straight off the battery. And if you incorporate that fuse into a plug or an isolation point, that way you can disconnect the battery really quick if you ever need to. You don't want to be one of those guys that has to watch their bike burn to the ground because they've got some dodgy or shoddy wiring and they weren't able to disconnect the battery quick enough. So on the other side of your starter solenoid, run straight to your starter motor. It's clearly marked with a B or an M. Step two. Now that you have everything labeled, it's time to remove the harness off the bike. Take it off completely and lay it out on the bench. Step three, strip the loom down so that you can see all the individual colors of the wires. Now it's time to identify what is what and get yourself familiar with all the different electrical components. This is where your workshop manual is gonna come in so handy. Step four. Now it's time to work out what you're keeping on the bike and what you're removing. For now, I'll be keeping the CDI, the coils, as well as the regulator rectifier. The rest is pretty much not gonna be used. I'll be replacing the regulator rectifier when I figure out exactly what battery I'll be using and I'll also probably be replacing the CDI unit at a later stage. And just make sure if you do upgrade your wiring, you get the quality stuff and use the right gauge for the right application. Just a couple of things about wiring diagrams to help you. If you can take this to a printer and have them blow it up three to four times bigger, it'll make life a lot easier for you. Otherwise, just get yourself a scribe like this and you can follow the lines just so that you can see what's going where. And wherever you see one of these little black dots is where the wires are actually being intersected. So just keep that in mind. So you've got these numbers next to every component and it will tell you exactly what they are which is great for you to actually identify what is what on your bike. And just one other thing, just to find the colors of the wires, they're usually written along the wire here in these little abbreviations, and you'll generally find that somewhere on the page. Step five. So if you have this same style of solenoid, I'm gonna tell you exactly where these four pins go. It may vary depending on the solenoid you have, depending on the model of the bike you have, if you're gonna keep the original or if you're gonna upgrade it. Just double check the instructions. But on this model, I'm gonna show you exactly where these go. So in this orientation, top right goes to the start on the Mo unit. Nice and easy. If you look at the Mo unit here, you can see it quite clearly. There's two start ports where you can put those two. There is an option to use either one or both of these ports. I'm just using one for now. I've just temporarily mounted this until I figure out exactly where it's going. And the bottom right here goes straight to the Mo unit and it's actually a bolt that has a thread that goes straight into the unit, which you'll need a little eyelet like this that you can crimp straight onto your wire. And the bottom left goes straight over to your regulator rectifier. So as you can see, this one here is going straight over to the regulator rectifier in this plug here on the red cable, which is actually the red wire and the black wire coming out of this is just going straight to earth. And the top left is just earth straight to your frame. Your stator, your generator, your alternator, whatever you want to call it, depending on the different bike that you may have, it pretty much has three, sometimes four wires that go straight over to your regulator rectifier. The wires that are coming out of the regulator rectifier that go to the generator, stator or alternator, they're all the same color and that means that it doesn't really matter what orientation you put them in. 
Just keep in mind, if you're going to be running a lithium battery of some sort, you will have to upgrade your regulator rectifier. These things are a bit sensitive and you will probably overcharge it if you use the original regulator rectifier. And that being said, regulator rectifiers generally don't live forever. They do have a lifespan and so therefore you will have to replace it at some point if the bike is getting quite old or it has had a hard life. Just note that CDIs and TCIs are slightly different depending on the make and model that you have. For example, the Yamaha XV750 that I'm working on has four more cables that come down to my generator, which I haven't actually illustrated on here, but just be mindful of that and always reference your workshop manual to know exactly what wires go where from your TCI or CDI. Just one thing to note here when it comes to motorcycle wiring, and if you're having any kind of faults, just remember these things sit out in the weather, they get corrosion, they have critters getting inside them, and most faults are due to a loose or poor connection. So make sure you check all of your connections before you start jumping the gun and spending money on new components. You might have a completely fine component and it might just be a bad connection. If you want to simplify the wiring even further, get yourself one of these little guys. They're called a Mo button from Motor Gadget. It's just one simple green wire that goes all the way back to the Mo unit. And this little guy slides inside your handlebars, depending on the handlebars you have. And the rest of these wires go directly to the switches on your handlebars. So there's none of this cluster nonsense that you would normally have with all these connectors. That's all it is. So all you're doing with this little guy here is pushing it inside the handlebars and you'll pull out the wire, whichever wire you need for that particular button. And it'll just come through a little hole that you pre-drilled inside here. So for instance, it comes out like that and then you just wire it into your control or your button and then bang off you go screw it back in again and you're done so simple and it's just one single green wire going straight back to the mo unit and that's it and it knows exactly which button you're pressing up here just like magic i've upgraded all of my push buttons and you should see some of the led motor gadget ones that they've recently released they're pretty damn cool there's a fantastic resource of information on Revival Cycles websites. They have done everything in their power to explain everything really well. Highly recommend going and checking that out. I'll leave that link to that particular page in the description below. Depending if you have a TCI, CDI or ECU, it's all going to be different for your particular bike. So there's not one generic way of wiring these things in. You're just gonna have to check that out on your diagram or once again, go over to Revival Cycles and it can give you a little bit of an explanation on what you have and how to wire it. So for this particular bike, what I've done is with a CDI unit, I've got the red wire out of that. I've got the red wires from the coils and I've connected them all up to one particular wire. There's three here, but they all go back to one. And that goes to the Mo unit in the ignition port. And the black wire out of the CDI goes straight to earth, anywhere on the body or back to the Mo unit if you want. And the other two wires off the coils go straight to the CDI. And this wire here is the only wire going to the coils as well as the CDI. So the Mo unit itself has an app and it has so much controllability. I've done an entire video explaining what this thing does and what it can do. So definitely check that out at the end of the video. With the key switch, it's just taking the positive straight off the Mo unit. And then on the other side, it's going straight over to the lock port. With your start button, you just need a momentary button. While editing this video, I realized I made a small error on this diagram, which is the start button. This pink wire here doesn't go to positive, it goes to negative, so just keep that in mind. And the other one goes to the start port. So the hardest part of your wiring is now done, it's just a matter of tidying up all your wiring. And on this side here, you've got your turn signals, and your brake and your horn and your lights, all that stuff gets plugged into here on the positive, and at the other end, you just earth it out. That's it, so simple. Step six, six. I'm just using a jump pack at the moment. That battery was just for demonstration purposes. So all the wiring is rough and ready. Everything's in place where it needs to be. I'm using the original key switch or key ignition. I'm using this as my start button and everything else is wired in its location ready, just like I explained in the diagram. There's no fuel or exhaust on this bike at the moment, so it's not gonna fire up. I just wanted to turn over so I can show you. So once everything's tested and it actually works, it's time to shorten all your wires, add all your proper little connectors. These things are waterproof, they're great. They are time consuming to put together, so grab yourself a beverage and enjoy the process. There is a lot more to wiring, but I wanted to keep this simple to help you get your head around it at the beginning stages. And if you're having a problem with something, leave it in the comments and let's help each other as a community and answer those questions. If you wanna know more about Motor Gadget Mo Unit, I've done an entire video showing exactly what it can do. Go and check that one out now.
Mm. 